Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a pairwise binomial test using Python, specifically JupyterLab and Python 3. So a pairwise binomial test could be used if you've done a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit test. And uh, that will only actually show that um, the categories, not all categories, have um, are matching their expected counts. They are significantly different and you might then want to know which ones are significantly different. There are a few different approaches to this. Um, I'll be following s something that I noticed on Stack Overflow and it's also available in some books. Um, but we simply perform a binomial test for each possible pair. That's what it comes down to. We do then need to adjust this and I'll be there are different ways of adjusting it. I'll be simply simply using a so-called Bonferroni uh, correction. Uh, and that's a basic type, there are other ways of doing that. Um, so uh, it might be helpful if you have seen my binomial test uh, video and I'll simply be going over everything with an example. Now for that example I'll be using pandas, so I'll import pandas and if you haven't installed pandas before then uh, please do so. I think it's pip install pandas but I'm not sure. Then you actually need to load some data. I'll be loading it as a panda data frame and call it my data frame my df. I get a warning because there are a few columns that I need some fixing on to, but it's not so relevant because I, the column that I need is the marital status. So I'm going to select that one as my own field so that I won't have to type this uh, in every time. I want the counts and actually I don't need the numpy array for that. I can simply actually use um, the, the value counts, but it might be helpful to have them stored as a numpy array. So similar as with pandas, if you have never installed numpy, uh, you might want to do that um, first. Uh, I'm not sure if it's pronounced numpy or numpy, but I think it's numpy. Um, I'm going to import it as np. Uh, so that I don't have, that I can simply use NP. Uh, NP for uh, as an array, so a NumPy array uh, at field, and then the counts. The counts will then actually simply be the, the categories, uh, sorry, the, the frequencies, and their uh, indexes I want to be stored also as an array with the separate categories. Now we can really get started. I, the next thing I need is iter tools because I want to have all the possible combinations. Note here, combinations, not permutations. Because the order for me doesn't really matter. I want to compare married with never married, married with divorced, married with widowed, married with separated, etc. All possible combinations. And uh, the comparison between married and divorced is the same as that of divorced versus married. So I don't need to do all of them. So let's get all of those with that iter tools um, and that combinations and then I can actually have a look I'll say my pairs and their values so and just to check that that actually worked and here are all the possible combinations a big warning um, um, after this loop it's actually empty again so if I loop through um, it actually empties it out so if I do this again then I don't get anything so just to have them for sure up and running I'll load it again now we can loop through these um, you can actually avoid that by using deep copies as it's called but for now it's okay so then I'll be using the binomial test um, we can therefore use the binomial test function from scipy and I can simply loop through now every time my two uh, my pairs and simply compare those two every time with 50 50. Uh, note that the sum is then also the sum of those two only so that's my number of trials and my probability of success is simply go uh, my number of successes is simply going to be the first one so let's have a look and these are all my significances we can adjust for these using the Bonferroni correction, which is simply multiplying them by the number of tests that we actually done. So I can do that with len uh, of those six, and then um, I simply get the adjusted ones. I like to see all of this in a nice 
data frame so I'm gonna add a nice results data frame and add the, the pair the significance and the adjusted significance and these are then my results um, these are all extremely small but it's all in scientific notation so perhaps easier to simply round those two columns and um, Oh, uh, my pairwise test round. Uh, sorry, I need to have results, of course, to be rounded. Results round. There we go. So, as you can see, they're actually almost all zero except for here. Um, and. Um, uh, oh, I was worried that this wasn't actually. Uh, but it's indeed a factor of 10 bigger. Um, so, but they're, they're all below 0.05. So, in this case, the highest one was 0.0264. So, they're all actually significantly different from the expected count. Uh, I don't want to do this every time. So, I made myself a nice little function of this. I'll put this Jupyter Notebook in the description so you can download it. And just to test if it works. And it seems to work just fine. I get the exact same results immediately. Uh, a possible effect size for a binomial test was actually Cohen G. I have another document and video on Cohen G. Um, so perhaps it's not where I made actually a function for that. That's uh, this function. Uh, I'm not going to go over that because I have a separate video on it. But it might be nice to actually add that in my binomial uh, pairwise function. So this is going to now nicely add just about everything. And let's have a look. And now you can see that it also shows Cohen's G and the uh, qualification according to Cohen. So just perhaps this went perhaps a little bit too fast. So I'll put the in slowly, scroll down a little bit. But of course, you can just download the Jupyter Notebook yourself. And that was it. I hope this video was helpful.